In this video, I'm going to be showing how to make a simple oscilloscope, which is a very handy utility uh, that you can use in a lot of different ways and different patches. Um, it's good for troubleshooting and debugging things. It's also just good for visualizing waveforms. So to start off, I've made an empty patch called Oscope. And I'll just start building up the patch and I'll make comments and explain things as, as I go. So first we have an in inlet which a uh, signal is going to come in. And then that signal is going into this table right, uh, which is going to write to a table that's called dollar sign zero dash O scope. And so by using that dollar sign zero, um, we can have multiple copies of this oscilloscope later on and they won't interfere with each other, even though they're going to have the same name, which uh, hopefully will be clear as we move forward. And this metro object is used just to trigger the writing. So essentially what I'm saying here is every 100 milliseconds, we're going to write whatever the signal is here to the, to the table. And then I'm just putting this checkbox here so that the metro runs. Click in it so that it automatically turns on when we use this. So now I'm going to put an array. And that array is going to be the name we already gave it, which is O scope. Uh, I'm not going to save the contents. And I'm going to use the Bezier curve which I just think you can try these other ones if you want, but this is the one I like how this looks. Um, and that's all we're going to do here. So now we have the table. I'm gonna, I want to make it uh, adjustable in terms of the X axis so that we can have different frequencies show up on here, which I think will be clear later when we do an example. But so we're going to make a message called resize. And uh, by saying dollar sign one, I'm saying take the inlet here. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna send that. So what this is gonna do is gonna resize the table so that we can have different lengths of table. Essentially it's gonna change the X, X axis scaling. I'm going to use this horizontal slider. Um, and so here I'm putting the minimum. So essentially I'm saying at a minimum the table will be 44 samples long. At a maximum it'll be 4,400. Um, and then I'm going to have it do logarithmic scaling. I'm just going to put it somewhere around here. And have it remember that as the starting value. And then we use this to send to the resizing the table. Um, and this just an aesthetic thing, but I want to make it so that this fits nicely when I go here and I say graph on parent. I'm going to hide the name. And then just adjust this so that when we use it in another patch, we essentially just see the scope and the, and the adjustment, the x-axis slider. We'll save that. So now we're going to make a new patch and just use the scope. So we say, oh, scope. And there it is. And so, for example, we can use an oscillator. And we wire that in. We turn the audio on and now we can see there it's showing up on the scope and here's an example of what we could do with that scaling and so for example we want to put a control here 
can change the frequency, change it to 1000 for example. And we can adjust this to show that. We can make that be 10,000 if we want. Um, and there's going to be limits to this, obviously. The, actually, this is limited by the sample rate, which in this case is set by this 100 milliseconds. So you can play with that if you want. You can make it a smaller value or a larger value, depending on your applications. So we just have like 10 hertz, for example. Now we can see I don't know, hopefully you get the idea. Obviously you can play with the values of the limits of the slider and the metro object here, uh, depending on what your application is. I find this range gives me, I don't know, it's pretty good for most of what I want to do. And then as I mentioned before, uh, by using this dollar sign zero, it means that we could have two of these running independently that aren't interfering with each other. Whereas if we didn't use this dollar sign zero, there would really only be one table and we would be writing, writing to it twice at the same time, which can give errors or just weird results. Um, and I don't know. So here's, I'm just going to play around with it. Show you. Do some frequency modulation. Okay, you can see what's happening there. You want to hear what that sounds like. video I just want to show a few more examples that aren't just sinusoids uh, just for a little bit of variety <laughs>